Hey folks, Ray from DCRemarker.com here. Talk about Garmin's newest wearable, the Vivo Active 3. Now Garmin actually announced three different units today, uh, three different wearables in particular. That's in addition to the Edge and Garmin Vector stuff they announced earlier this week on the Cycling Ram. Uh, but at IFA this week, they went ahead and announced the Vivo Active 3, the Vivo Move HR, which is a new edition of the Vivo Move with optical heart rate. Then there's the Vivo Sport, which is a new band that builds on the Vivo Smart 3 that was announced this past spring, so like a mere five months ago. Um, and it builds on that with a couple new features as well. Uh, but this video is all about the Vivo Active 3. I'm going to walk through all the new features and how it works on the watch itself. But I'm not going to do that standing in the rain here. So let's go ahead under cover and walk through all the menus on the watch and all the features. Okay, so here we are on the watch face itself. Um, you can see the time is right there. This is the default or the stock watch face on the Vivo Active 3. But of course, I can customize this and choose my own watch face. I even put like a picture on the background using Connect IQ, all pretty straightforward. Um, you can see my steps there, my uh, stairs climbed and so on. I can swipe through this right there and go to my stairs climbed again, kind of a deeper page. These are different uh, smartphone notifications coming in. I can go down to the bottom here and look at other ones kind of the past. Uh, so lots of stuff, all kind of the same as on past Garmin watches. Keep on swiping through this music control. There is no music stored on the Vivo Active 3. Just keep that in mind so it's not with the Fitbit Ionic or the Apple Watch or a lot of other watches that have music. This will only control music on my smartphone, which is kind of a bummer. This is the new stress score functionality. This was introduced on the Vivo Smart 3 this past uh, spring. And what it'll do is I'll go ahead and look at stress of myself using the optical heart rate sensor in the back there. Um, it's not gonna find stress of this wooden block, uh, but you can look in the app after the fact and see your stress score. Uh, and it's pretty cool. And if I put my finger behind it there, it will probably measure that stress score. Uh, and I found it actually surprisingly accurate. It's really neat to watch over the course of a really stressful day. Uh, check out my post down below where I kind of show some graphs of a stressful day and, and what that looks like. Uh, uh, so it's pretty neat. It may not find me here, yeah, because it's not on my, my wrist. So no worries. Uh, calendar events, uh, kind of a my day summary. I did a 50 minute run at the top there. So you can see that up there uh, and some of the same steps as before. And we're back to weather. Um, so a couple notes on the watch design itself. It is uh, this now new round design. It uses the same Garmin connect um, or connector on the back as the 400 935, the uh, Phoenix 5, the new Vivo sport that just came out uh, all use the same connector there this is the new elevate optical heart rate sensor the same one that's also introduced on all those products i just mentioned as well started off this past january this has a lower battery profile so it, it basically lasts longer um, it's also smoother in the past and it's a little more accurate in my my experience and then on this side here is a swipe area. So I can go ahead and swipe up and down. It's a bit awkward for me to do right now because I'm uh, seated in kind of a weird spot, but I can basically swipe through displays up and down like this and go down this way. Um, and it's sort of handy when you're running, you can just swipe uh, left and right. Uh, it works okay. I wouldn't say it's awesome. You may have seen a few times there where it like double uh, went to two pages, just like that right there. Uh, so it's still beta, so it'll kind of work on that a little bit. Um, but what is cool is in the app, you can go ahead and actually switch the orientation of the watch entirely. Like this you can go ahead and tell it that this is now the left hand side and this is the right hand side and the flip um, the user interface over and you just pop out the watch bands there and, and switch them around it's pretty cool it's a neat idea and i haven't really seen it on other smart watches in the past so nicely done Next, um, I can't really show you Garmin uh, Pay in the unit itself because it's not yet enabled on this watch. Uh, maybe tomorrow after they announce this, they might enable it then. Uh, so Garmin Pay will allow me to go and take this watch, put it up against a contact list, NFC reader, and go and pay using my credit card, which is pretty cool. And Apple Watch has had that for a while. Fitbit introduced it recently, some Android Wear watches, uh, but it's definitely the future. Your phone probably has it also. Uh, so, so pretty neat stuff. To start a workout, what I would do is I go ahead and hit this button right there. And that brings me to the workout selection screen. These are the ones that I've selected as favorites, so run, treadmill, and bike. Uh, but I can go down to the sports here and choose any of these and set them as favorites. So you see, uh, you know, indoor workouts like indoor track, indoor bike, walk, walk indoors, floor climbs, pool swim, but not outdoor swim, uh, strength and cardio, elliptical, stair stepper, rower, and so on. Even navigate, I can go ahead and basically set waypoints and save waypoints. I'm gonna go back, um, oops, there we go. I'm gonna go back here to do a run workout. Um, you'll notice down at the bottom, there's now structure workouts right there. I can tap that and pull structure workouts from Garmin Connect or Garmin Connect Mobile using my smartphone, um, which is pretty neat. And then down at the bottom, I can change my settings. Uh, now this is sort of interesting what they've done here in the data, sorry, I hit the swipe side there, what they've done in the data screens there. Um, so I go ahead and tap this. 
and you've got three customizable screens. Uh, so one, two, three, you can enable them, disable them. And you've got a layout of fields there and you can choose the layout of the fields. This is the four uh, data field layout. Uh, that's the three, that's the, keep on going down, another three, that's two, and then one. Um, the only bummer is this applies to all of them. So in this case, I've chosen four, go swipe back. And now we go down to screen number one, edit data fields and you can see the four data fields at the top I put time of day up there I put elevation there and temperature right there and calories down the bottom so on the top here I can choose from a couple of different fields timer heart rate calories distance and time of day so just basically those five I think data fields whereas when I go to these middle ones I can now choose for tons of different fields so timer fields isn't just a timer it's time lap time last lap time average lap time elapsed time uh, and so on distance pace speed heart rate fields cadence fields temperature fields elevation fields other fields uh, others calories heading lap sunrise sunset time of day steps lap i mean there's just crap tons of stuff here all the usual stuff you'd expect on garmin but those can only be such for those middle two which is sort of a bummer uh, and the same thing applies to screen two also four fields uh, screen three four fields and then you go ahead and enable this heart rate uh, zone gauge as well in any case, beyond that, from a sports standpoint, much of the same stuff you've seen in the past. Uh, there's auto lap here, um, alerts, uh, auto pause, auto scroll, GPS, of course, being on for this. Uh, and I can go back again. And then here I can go into the workout. And if I were to start it, you'll see these are the data fields that I started, showed earlier, the data pages. I can go swipe up like this. I could use this swipey thing on the side to swipe up there um, through my different data pages. And again, there's no heart rate because it's a wooden block, uh, but the heart rate sensor um, would be on in the back. There you go. You can see it's turned on as soon as I moved it. Uh, and so it'll go ahead and it'll stay on at one second recording the entire time. Um, so there's that. I'm going to go ahead and stop this right there real quick. Uh, done. We're just going to discard this one. Um, and no, there is now rep counting on this. So if I went into the strength training um, option down here, you'll see that strength. Uh, oops, I think that was cardio. Sorry, my bad. It's a little bit weird for me to like on this angle here. Um, so this will go ahead and allow me to monitor sets and reps within this automatically. Um, so once it finds the heart rate there, I don't think I'll start before I do that. There we go. Um, so set one, and I can't really demonstrate this very easily right now with, on this wooden block without kind of moving the camera around, but it'll show my reps in there. And then when I'm done with that, I can go ahead and edit this rep set if somehow it missed it. So if I'm doing reps and I did eight and uh, it only recorded seven for some reason, I can edit that right there and it shows and records the rest as well. So it's all pretty cool. Uh, again, this was introduced on the Vivo Smart 3 this past uh, see spring, and that worked out pretty darn well there as well. So next, kind of going through some few more things here. Um, there is Vivo, Vivo. There is VO2 max estimation that's been added to this. That's only going to work on workouts that are a bit more intense. Uh, so I can't really show you anything on this right now. I've done some intervals and stuff, but nothing yet to tr trigger that. Um, fitness age will also show up mostly on the mobile app. Uh, so Garmin has completely revamped the mobile app itself, uh, which is pretty neat. And that's where you'll see like the stress monitoring for your all day stress and so on in, in there. And you're also going to notice on this a little bit of a tweaked user interface compared to the past. Uh, things like starting and stopping sports are a little bit different. Uh, and of course, just kind of how the swiping works here you know you don't swipe right into something you're pressing the button into something uh, minor things but you know just, just a couple things to note there um, I think I mentioned earlier on those structured workouts Garmin is doing preloading of structured workouts on this for uh, a couple different sports in particular bike run um, are in there as well as cardio and strength so similar to what Fitbit's done where they have these kind of preloaded pre-canned workouts that you can execute right then and there uh, last thing I want to talk about is in the settings area here so we go on down, uh, I can look at my stats, for example, uh, there's VO2 max. Oh, I did actually get one. So it's 54 right now on kind of initial run I did um, last measure. I think that was the, yeah, the 31st it did that. I can also do a test right there to test out of that. I have no desire to do that right now because tests for VO2 max generally hurt. Um, records you can see right here, I'm gonna clear out of the way, records, smart communication that came in. Uh, I can see my running records, different paces and stuff. Um, all of them uh, pretty basic right now. Cycling records, the same. Resting heart rate would show that. Uh, you can see it's it's average over the last seven days, 54. Uh, right now it's about 49, I think, as uh, last night was. Um, so decreasing a little bit. Eurobike is a pretty stressful show for me. Sorry, I just, again, pressed the button on the side there. That's my, my bad, using the, uh, the swipe there, which is why the screen kind of jiggled like that. 
Um, so normally you're wearing on your wrist, you're not gonna put your thumb there in that position, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, let's see, settings, oh yeah. So down here, what's cool is in the sensors area, you now have Bluetooth smart sensor capabilities. Um, so you can go ahead and add new. Um, I can search all, I'm gonna search for heart rate though right now, because that's what I'm wearing, a heart rate strap from Wahoo. It's a Bluetooth smart heart rate strap. And then in just a couple seconds, that will show up uh, right in there, and you better go ahead and pair with it. So let me just uh, make sure, there we go. Um, so you can see the AMP Plus variant, and then the Bluetooth smart sensor down there. There we are, the Wahoo Ticker X. And I go ahead and add that and read that straight from uh, my heart rate there. So if I don't trust the optical heart rate sensor for whatever reason, it does support that. In that same area, I can also add Bluetooth smart and AMP Plus speed and cadence sensors, as well as foot pods, as well as the AMP Plus Tempe unit. So that is a brief overview of things um, within the watch itself. Definitely check out down in the description field there, kind of my full post on this where there's plenty more details and plenty more pictures. I go into kind of a lot more details on kind of some of the decisions behind things or why they were made. Uh, so it's definitely worth checking out. Okay, there you go, a look at the new Vivo Active 3. Um, check out some of the videos in the description as well as floating above on the screen now. Uh, I've got the new Fitbike Ionic that just came out. So lots of details on that too. Uh, it's definitely shaping up to be a pretty cool uh, fall for smartwatches in particular in the fitness realm of smartwatches uh, with IFA starting today in Berlin. There's probably due to be many more announcements too. Uh, so stay tuned here for that. Don't forget to whack that subscribe button as well as the like button. Have a good one.